Hello, I'm Keith Olson with the Schmidt Music Trombone Trap, back with another daily practice tip for you. And today I'm going to talk about tone. I've had a number of requests from watchers, from viewers, to talk about tone. And frankly, tone is a difficult thing to talk about because it's such an individualistic idea. Um, really, of, of everything we do as musicians, as brass players, as trombonists, um, the idea more than anything else that makes us individual, to make us unique, is really our sound. And so I, I can't you know, stand here and say, here's how to get the perfect sound, because guess what? Well, first off, I don't have it. And second off, a per the perfect tone, the perfect sound doesn't exist. There are you know, so many beautiful variations in sound, but I think there are a few concepts that may be helpful, and certainly been helpful for me, to help develop my own personal sound, and may be helpful for you as well. So, the first idea is listening. What does listening mean? So that can mean, of course, listening to our own sound, but more importantly, it's listening to everyone else's sound. So often when I am, especially working with younger you know, students, younger trombone players, brass players, when I you know, ask them, hey, who's your favorite player? Who's your favorite trombonist or trumpet player or horn player or whatever it might be? they oftentimes don't have an answer. And that's problematic for a number of reasons, but for us to develop our own sound, we have to know what is possible. We have to have an auditory idea. We have to have the sound living up here to give us a goal, something to work towards. And very often when we are creating our own sound, it, it's not a, a strict copy. Like I want to sound like this one particular player. Very often it's a synthesis. It's a combining of all of these different inputs, all of these great sounds that we hear, whether we're consciously trying to copy and emulate them, or really more often subconsciously, we're, all of these different ideas we're taking in are melding and becoming part of the tonal concept, what we want to create with our instrument. The, the mind and the body is a really, really amazing thing. Very often, if we have a, a, a true defined goal, if we're able to say, here's what I want to work towards, here's what I want to accomplish, when it comes to playing, for example, very often the body will work to help to create that. You, you know, it, it's very subconscious in a lot of ways. There are certain ideas we're gonna talk about that can that, you know, help in getting out of the way to allow our body to create that, but we're, our mind is constantly going to be working towards trying to help us to create that, but we have to have a good idea in the first place. And frankly, nowadays we have zero excuse for not listening. We have more resources available than ever. And you know, there are literally thousands and tens of thousands of great players available at a click of a button, at a touch of our phone that we can go out there and find. And of course, there's no substitute for hearing great live music. However great a recording is, there's a different level of nuance that we can take away from seeing and hearing a live performance and hearing a great player and hearing that player sound in person that is going to allow us to continue to develop our own concept of what we want our own tone, our own timbre to be. So first part was listening. Second part is resonance. And this kind of makes sense in a way. If we think about a really great sound, I, I don't know about you, but I've never listened to somebody play and say, boy, you know, they've got a really great dead sound. I just love how the sound just sits there and doesn't do anything. <laughs> it, it doesn't happen, at least for me, no matter what kind of sound we're going for. And it, it doesn't matter genre. It doesn't matter if we're talking, you know, jazz, pop, rock, funk, ska, Latin, salsa, you know, classical, orchestral, solo literature, wind ensemble, it doesn't matter the genre. To me, a great sound has a resonance, has a ring to it. So in, in part of this, you know, it, it's very much about just trying to create that resonance in our sound. But for me, it's also about allowing our body to resonate and allowing the, getting our body out of the way to allow everything else to resonate as well. When I was, especially when I was in graduate school, one of the things that really, really struck me more than anything else was the idea of getting my body out of the way of my playing. In other words, trying to keep things as 
neutral as possible. I like the term open. Um, sometimes I, I don't like the term relax because for me, relax means our body, our, our muscles, everything is not prepared and ready to work for us. When we're playing, there is a, there's activity to a certain extent, but it's not so much like a driving hard energy. It's an openness. It's a preparation. It's the body ready to assist when it needs to assist. And so when I, you know, started playing, um, I had a very, very close on my body and everything was just tight. And, and again, everything was just kind of moving inward and what the result of that was was a tight sound a sound that was closed it didn't have this resonance and i'm trying to think really tight it's very unnatural now for me but instead if i allow my body to be open if i i, I think expansion if i allow everything to kind of you know, move outward and everything to be centered and prepared and ready to support that sound just all the way through the process from the breathing to the initiation of the sound in the aperture and everything in between, it's just so much more free and open. It's helping to support that resonance. And working all the way through, again, from, from you know my body, my torso, my arms, my shoulder, my neck, my aperture. Sometimes when I hear folks play, you can tell that whether it's conscious or subconscious, they're thinking tight with the embouchure. There are a lot of different things I would use to describe the embouchure, but I don't know if I'd ever want to describe it as tight. Um, I want to think of it as supportive. Depending on what we're doing, we, we need to be supporting the embouchure here. But for me, if, if the embouchure is tight, that means that the actual vibrating surface here is tight. And all that's going to do is inhibit that resonance. It's going to inhibit the sound production. So we're keeping our body open and letting, keeping everything supportive of that sound. Working towards, again, the first step, working towards that listening so that where we have the concept in our head, we're keeping our body out of the way. And instead of it stopping it getting in the way, it's actually helping us to support that sound, that idea, that tone that we have in our our mind. So we have listening, we have resonance, keeping our sound resonant, allowing our body to be open, allowing it to support that resonance. The third step is time. Um, of everything we do, you know, creating that tone, creating that timbre, and you know, allowing it to continue growing and maintaining it is something that takes a lot of time in a lot of cases. When I talk to folks who are coming back to playing, they've um, they've gone away, especially right now, kind of with everything going on, we, we're seeing a lot of trombone players, brass players, musicians in general, who are coming back to their instruments. I've got some free time. I realized how important music is to me. Fantastic. And when we have these folks come back and they start playing, very often I hear a couple things. First off, boy, I just cannot play as long as I used to. The, the endurance is something that takes a lot of work to not only build, but to maintain. And the second thing we hear very often is, boy, my tone, my sound is just not the way it used to be. Because again, it's very much, there's a lot of muscular development we have to do to be able to create and to, to develop that sound. And there's a lot of maintenance. We have to continue growing that musculature and just maintaining all of that as well. And so, you know, for me, part of being able to, you know, continue maintaining and growing my concept of sound is putting in the practice time. There aren't a real a lot of really great ways to cheat that because it's constantly learning and developing, maintaining, how do I create this sound? So there's got to be just practice time involved. And even when I do hear players who can take days or sometimes weeks off at a time and they come back and play and you hear them say, oh, I haven't played for two weeks and they pick up their instrument and they sound like a million bucks. Well, chances are, okay, they haven't practiced for the last two weeks, but how many hundreds and thousands of hours have they put in in the prior months and years before that? So that way, when they pick up the instrument, their body instinctually knows this is what I need to do to create the sound I have in my head. And they've spent all of this time listening and growing and the time with their instrument and, and listening to everyone else where they have the sound innately in their head. Here's what I want to accomplish. The body is trained. It knows how to accomplish that as well. So listening, resonance, 
time. Three ideas there that may be helpful for you. And it's a little bit, you know, generalistic. I mean, we can get a lot more into specifics. You know, how do we develop tone? You know, I've done videos on long tones, on lip slurs, on using our air. There's a lot of different resources we can use to help lead ourselves to that. But these, you know, simple concept, hopefully knowing what we want our sound to be, allowing our body to help to support that sound, spending the time to develop and maintain what our body is trying to do. You know, hopefully there's a few basics there that you're able to use to maybe continue growing your own concept of how do I develop my sound and how do I grow it? How do I become, give myself the, the best individual voice that I can? So hopefully these ideas are helpful. If you have any thoughts, if you have any questions about what we talked about, feel free to leave them in the comments here. We always appreciate the feedback. If, you, if you've had experiences with this, I know others in our community would love to hear about it as well. Um, as always, you can check out our other videos. We've got a really great series of uh, daily practice tips that you can check out. Hopefully some of these other ideas might be helpful for you if you haven't already checked them out. As as well as everything else we have on our channel. If you like this video, consider giving it a thumbs up. If you haven't already done so, please consider subscribing to our channel so you can hear about get notifications when we have more of these videos coming out. And of course, you can check us out on Facebook and Instagram as well. So thank you very much for watching everybody. Okay, happy practicing and please keep making music.